Monday again. up her lab report. Is it due today? No. When's it due? It's not. It's one of her personal interest research projects that she's going to use in order to take over the world one day. Right. <laughs> of course. Why do I have to be the one that has a brain for a twin? I mean, it's so boring. Every night I ask her if she just wants to hang out with me, but no. If you're going to take over the world, experimenting with bacteria from the door handle is absolutely vital. Ew. I know. Well, I love you both just the way you are. Yeah, well, tell the teachers that. They can never seem to remember my name. I just get called Sarah's twin. I think I'm going to have to wear a sign that says, my name is Pinky. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have thought it would have been that hard to remember for some reason. Karate. Excuse me? Karate. It's Greek. Ancient Greek. <laughs> it's the form of greeting to multiple people. Right. <laughs> Sarah, I love you for who you are, but why can't you just say good morning? It's too happy or something. <laughs> Wait! Are you gonna eat that? No, it's bad for my skin. Oh, okay, so can I have it? Yeah, sure. What are you doing? I just need it for something, for an experiment. Why, did you wanna eat it? No, no, you have it. Okay, well, gracias. Bonjour. <laughs> Where are those boys? Boys, get up right now! Oh, good morning, Davey. How are you feeling this morning? Very refreshed and ready to begin another week of absolutely hating school. <laughs> Davey, it's not that bad. You just have to find your niche. Maybe. Where's your brother? Oh, Alexander! What are you doing? Oh, morning, Mum. I just didn't want to be late to school. Oh, good boy. See, <laughs> see, Davey, Alex has found his niche and now he loves school. Really? What's your niche, Alex? Making sure I have my canteen order in on time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a start. Now, you boys, make sure you eat all your breakfast and remember to have your milk and remember Mom, to- Mum, it's okay. We're not babies. We're almost 18. Almost adults. You'll always be my little boys. <laughs> and you'll find that boys stay in the almost adults category for a lot longer than you would imagine. Now, I'm gonna go get ready for work, so I'll see you this afternoon, my little boys. <laughs> We're still eating. Oh, yes, Captain Obvious, we're still eating. Well, here's another obvious statement. We're gonna be late for school because you're still eating. It's okay, Sarah. Chess club isn't until lunchtime. Why do you think I'd care about chess club? Because you can practice taking over the world. <laughs> you're so infantile. That means cool. It's ancient Greek. 
Can we just go? Oh, just go without us. We still got stuff to do. Fine, let's go, Pinky. Walking to school all by ourselves. I feel so grown up and infantile. <laughs> Give them a minute until they're out of sight, and then we'll go. Let's go. <coughs> Mom, we're going. Bye, boys. I love you. Love you too, Mom. Bye. Good, they're here. Check that it's them before you open the door. Who is it? Your mother! <laughs> oh, you scared me, Tony. <laughs> oh, I didn't know your mum's scared. I didn't know your mum's scared you that much. <laughs> Grow up, boys! All you want to do is act like children and waste our time. I'm meeting Mr. Daniels at recess for detention, so can we just hurry up? Okay, okay. Angela, maybe if you didn't go getting detentions all the time. It would give us a little bit of flexibility in our timetable. You know? What's the detention for this time? Forging an absence note. <laughs> yeah, and here's the best part. Because of the frequency with which Angela writes these notes, she thought it would be good to get creative. So she writes, Please excuse Angela from missing school yesterday. We forgot to get the Sunday paper off the porch when it was delivered, so when we found it the next day, we thought it was Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> but it was Thursday, not Monday. Exactly. Mr. Daniels thought Dad was having a joke. Because he thought it was hilarious. So he phoned Dad for a bit of a laugh. Okay, story time is over. I'll have another detention to serve tomorrow if I don't get back to school in time. Okay, well, here is a list of our possible target options. The Chinese restaurant. They don't keep cash on premises. The bank? Probably a little too ambitious for a group of teenagers. The bread shop? They probably make a profit of $5 per day, considering a loaf of bread costs like two cents or something. The gym? Why would the gym have any money to steal? People just come in and they swipe their little membership cards. No cash, Alex. Yeah, but those um, yoga mats they have are pretty fancy. They have this little um, LCD display built in that measures your heart rate. We could steal them and sell them on eBay. Tiny. They have 360 fitness written all over them so people don't, you know, steal them. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm hearing your feedback. But there's something you missed about 360 fitness. This will be good. It is. Have you heard of Rosie Maxwell? Yeah, she's one of those self-absorbed socialites who's famous for being famous. Exactly. But she also happens to be married to Sid Maxwell, one of the richest men in the whole country. Good for her. It's almost recess time. She goes to 360 Fitness every day. Great. Let's kidnap her. We'll easily get away with that. Ah, uh, I don't think that's such a good idea. Have you seen the length of her nails? <laughs> <laughs> Scary. <sighs> of course we're not going to kidnap her, Tiny. What do you see in this photo? Nails. Long nail. Anything else, Tiny? The ring? Yes, the ring. She goes to the gym, takes off the ring, puts it in her locker, and goes for an hour-long workout every day. How much is it worth? Oh, rumour has it. It's valued at 220000 bucks. This is good, but how are we going to get it? We can't just walk in there and take it. And then there's the access code to her locker. How are we going to get that? Tiny. <coughs> Me. Yes, your friend Joel is a manager at the gym. And he just happens to have a criminal record. 
He does? Yes, for extortion. So we're going to hope that his morals haven't slipped and we're going to bribe him. <laughs> well, you are. Okay. So, what do I need to get from him? Oh, information, the security camera schematics, and the locker master key. And what's Tiny going to bribe him with? This. 20 bucks. Yeah, that'll work for sure. This is one that we have produced here at home. We're working on a couple hundred more. Looks pretty legit, actually. We know. So soon we'll have a sizable donation to make the job in exchange for some friendly chatter. And how long will it take you to get the rest of these beauties produced? Eight weeks. Okay, so when you're just about done, we'll arrange another meetup, and hopefully Angela won't have another detention to cause us problems. And now for the complication. Dad is coming back from his business trip next month, and he's going to be working from home during the day. So we can't meet here again. So just bring her to school. Well, don't you think people might be wondering what's in the box we'll be carrying around all day? True. There's got to be some way to exchange it without people thinking it's odd. Drama night. Huh? Drama night. We exchange it at drama night. Drama night. Drama is for nerds. Why would we be at drama night? Because we'll all be in the drama club. <sighs> sure thing, Tiny. Maybe we'll get a discount for joining both the drama club and the chess club. If we made the exchange on stage as part of the drama, then it wouldn't matter who was there watching. They would all just think it was part of the play and nobody would fat an eyelid. He has a point, you know. Yes, with the subsequent point of we have to join the drama club. Well, it might be the only way. Yeah, well, I'm not wearing any stupid costumes, okay? So, you're in? Yeah, I guess so. How about you, Angela? Yeah, what else? Good. We're all set. Alex and I will work on the cash. Tony can work on getting info out of Joel. And Angela can work on her acting skills. Wait, has anyone else realised that we don't even know what the play is that the drama club is working on? Well, that's why you're going to work on your acting skills, so that no matter what the play is, you can just land the main part and we'll just sneak the cash into the play somehow. This is such a stupid idea. Maybe, but you don't have time to argue now. You've got ten minutes to get back to school, or Mr. Daniels will be looking out for you again. Great. See you at Drama Club, boys. <laughs> Welcome to Drama Club, boys and girls. I'm so glad to see some new faces here today. <laughs> Normally, we would perform our customary welcoming skit for our new members, but we have a very, very special visitor here today. So we need to give some time to him instead. Please give a very dramatic drama club welcome to Mr. Daniel! These people for real? I want to gag, except that they think I was probably being really dramatic and then I'd be the cool kid of drama club. Uh, excuse me, <clears throat> Alex and Angela, if we could please give our attention to Mr. Daniels now, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Sadly for you, I'm not here to join the drama club. Drama isn't really my thing. I see enough drama from the high school girls that I don't really have a desire to immerse myself in it anymore. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Ellis tells me that you're all beginning work on the major mid-year performance. What play have you chosen, Mr. Ellis? I have chosen Romeo and Juliet. Great. My favourite. Oh, me too, sir. That's great, Glory. <laughs> anyway, you're all probably wondering why I'm here. So I'll tell you. Last year's mid-year drama was... How do I say it? Interesting. Students, that is a euphemism for failure. <laughs> You're right, Mr. Ellis. It was a failure. And it was really embarrassing to have respected community members here watching while the play fell apart in front of our eyes. What happened? Well, it seems like the costume department didn't know the difference between Maya and Luther and Maya and Luther King. So... <laughs> We sort of had a 16th century German monk as the leader of the American Civil Rights Movement. <laughs> but sir, if the costume department is just a bunch of students, shouldn't the responsibility for such a blunder lie primarily on the teacher? Yeah, it was Mr. Jameson. You're right, David. And I'm pleased to tell you that Mr. Jameson seemed very content flipping burgers at McDonald's when I saw him there. I see. Young people, 
We did not want a repeat of last year's disaster. I personally selected Mr. Ellis to take on the challenge of coordinating the drama club because I am confident that he will aim much higher than his predecessor. My confidence in you, however, is not quite as great. So I'm here to tell you that I want you to prove me wrong. I don't like being wrong, but I'm willing to be wrong this time. Thank you, Mr. Daniels. Rest assured, you'll be as wrong as the costume department was last year. <laughs> not funny, Mr. Ellis. But on that note, I need to get going. Remember, Drama Club, I'm expecting perfection. Okay. I suppose we'd better do some auditions for the main parts, eh? Why don't we have our new club members go first? You guys can read the discussion between Mr. and Mrs. Montague and Mr. and Mrs. Capulet from Act 1, Scene 1. Uh, but sir, there's four of us. Three guys and one girl. You need two guys and two girls. Mm, yeah, that is a problem. Well, Alex, how about you read the part of the prince, and Mary, you read the part of Mrs. Montague. Uh, sure, let's go guys. What noise is this? Give me my long sword. A crutch, a crutch, mm -hmm. by calling for a sword. My sword, I say, old Montague has come and flourishes his blade in spite of me. Thou vit! Uh, villain, Capulet, hold me not, let me go. Thou shalt not stir a foot to seek a foe. Rebellious subjects, enemies to peers, profaners of this neighbour stand still. Will they not hear? What ho, ye men, ye beasts that quench the fire. Okay, okay, <laughs> hold on. That was really good, guys. Now, hmm. Why don't we try a few different options and then we'll have a look at the two main parts of Romeo and Juliet, of course. When do we find out the results? Tomorrow! I'll sleep on it tonight and have the good news for you in the afternoon. Now, let's have Danny, let's have Angela, and let's turn to Act 2, Scene 2, and we'll go from line 48. Okay. <clears throat> What's in the name? That which you call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee, take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me by love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth, I'll never be Romeo. That's great. Now, who would like to go next? Well, 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 well. Time for the big announcement, guys. You all did very well in your auditions yesterday. I was very impressed, especially by some of our new club members. That's me. So, for the main parts, we have Corey as Montague, Danny as Capulet, Mary as Lady Montague, Esther as Lady Capulet. And now for the big parts, David is playing Romeo, and Angela is playing Juliet. What? You heard correctly, Angela. You're playing Juliet in the play. Let's all give her a huge dramatic drama club applause. Is she okay? Yeah, she's just uh, really excited about getting the part. <laughs> but, sir, what about me and Alex? What part do we get? Tiny Alex, oh, I have two very special jobs for the both of you. Tiny, you can help with the set design, and Alex, you can help with the costume design. Cool, so I'm like the director, pretty much. Yeah, I guess so, pretty much. Awesome. Um, <laughs> hey, so how about we get right into it? Um, why don't we get right into it and have a read through our parts? Grab a spot on the stage, kids. Well, Tony, it looks like it's our job to work the gift exchange into the place on that. Don't worry, Alex. I've got it all under control, being the director and all. <laughs> Nothing like a little bit of retail therapy, girls. I'm exhausted now though. Time for a nap. I'll never understand why engaging in such a gross display of narcissistic capitalism is considered as therapy. <laughs> as if it were actually good for your health. 
Well, it makes me feel good. And people pay a lot more money to go and lie on a couch and talk to someone in order to feel good, you know. So just don't judge me. Go and write an essay or something. What about Pinky? You know, people always tell me I'm a bad Christian because I'm not the happy, in-your-face, self-absorbed person that my twin is. But nobody seems to realize that although you're nice, you're also materialistic, shallow, and greedy. I love you, Pinky, but I never want to be you. Who is it? Auntie Laura. Oh. Come in, doors open. Hi, darling. Hey. What's wrong? Nothing. You can't get away with it that easily. You're sitting here without a pen and paper or a science experiment. So, you want to tell me the truth? I just feel bad. I was really mean to Pinky. What for? She's just so different to me. Everyone likes her and nobody likes me. Whenever she says something dumb, everyone thinks it's so cool or so hilarious. No matter what I say, everyone thinks I'm awkward and weird. Yeah, Pinky has a lot to learn, Sarah. You reckon? She's still trying to learn how to tie her shoelaces. You know, Sarah, you know you've got a lot to learn too. You might be smart, but you're not perfect. I know, but being smart is the only thing I'm good at. It's the only thing people like about me. Um. You know, you can be smart without having to tear others down. You know, God might have made you and your sister to be very different, but there's no difference in the love that he has for both of you. I'm not a very good Christian, am I? None of us are. I have a challenge for you. Why don't you look for opportunities to do good for others, just to help them out? Not necessarily smart things like helping them out with homework, but just something simple, just to be nice. Okay. Challenge accepted. Could you hand me that bag? What is it? Mum bought a present for Amy and Sam. Well, it's not really for Amy and Sam, it's for the new baby. But apparently it takes up to 24 months for children these days to learn how to read, so we have to write the card to Amy and Sam. <laughs> That's lovely, Sarah. Anyways, Mum's really tired and she wants to be able to drop it off in at their place on the way to the school drama tonight, so I'm going to wrap it up for her. Thanks for chatting, Auntie Laura. I'm not exactly a pro at wrapping presents, and I think I might need my compass and protractor for this challenge. <laughs> no worries. Hey, Aunt Laura. Hello, boys. How are my, how are my favorite, two favorite nephews today? Good, but where are your only nephews, you know? Yes, that's good. Because then I can't favour any other nephews more than you, right? So, you're both my favourite nephews. If that's so, then how come, last year, even though we're twins, you remembered his birthday but forgot mine? What? I didn't? Did I? Did Sorry, I? you did. How can I be so stupid, Alex? You know I love you both. It's okay, it's okay. We're just kidding. Just practising your acting skills for tonight. <laughs> After that heart attack you gave me, I'm not sure I should come tonight. Of course you should. It'll be a performance that people will talk about for years to come. Yeah, sure. Well, I have to talk to your mother, so excuse me. Okay. I'll see you my two favourite nephews later tonight. See okay, you. see ya. Where's the cash? In the piano stall. I'll get it. Okay, I'll grab the scissors and tape. Grab the wrapping paper while you're there. Wrapping paper? I thought you were getting the wrapping paper. No, you dope. I told you to get it. What are we going to do? We can't just walk around with a box all day. Ta-da! It says, congratulations, it's a boil over it. <laughs> Nobody will be able to read it from that distance. Oh, I guess you're right. Alright, we better do this quickly. You watch while I rap. Mom and Aunt Laura are coming. Hey. 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 Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you later tonight. I can't believe the babies are all grown up. Well, they're not exactly grown up. Yeah. But they're getting there. I guess so. I'll see you later. See ya. Ah. How sweet. <laughs> they wrapped it up for me. Aw. Better not forget to take it.
get to Amy and Sam tonight. Should probably put it in my bag now so I don't forget. <laughs> Sarah, you're right, and I'm sorry. <coughs> no, Pinky, I'm sorry. I'm a real brat sometimes. Well, so am I. I guess we are twins after all. What are you doing with the baby present? I just thought I'd help Mum out and wrap it up for her. Where should I leave it? Maybe put it on top of the piano so we remember to take it when we leave. <laughs> Good idea. You know, when I saw you with the present, I thought maybe you had swapped it out for a toy microscope or something. Very funny, Pinky. But do you seriously think I'd ever give someone a toy microscope instead of a real one? <laughs> How lame is that? Science isn't a game, Pinky. But mind you, a toy microscope is a better gift for a baby than a Gucci handbag. So I'll take it as a compliment. You're never too young for Gucci. How did we end up being so different? I don't know, but I like it this way. Me too. Come on, let's get ready. Oh, phew, still here. <laughs> oh, I can't believe you. How could you accidentally forget it like that? Mum could have found it, or worse still, Pinky could have found it and bought herself a whole new wardrobe of clothes. Well, I obviously didn't find it, so just knock it off. Oh, just give it here, I'll look after it. Have you got all of the props and costumes? Yeah, they're at the school already. Alright, let's go. Mum, we're going. Oh, boy, it's just Very beautiful girls. Um, yeah, you too, Mum. No, she's being serious. She's in a good mood. Okay, thanks. And thanks for being helpful in wrapping the baby present up. It's in my bag and ready to go. We'll stop quickly and drop it in on the way. Okay, put this out the back and don't lose it this time. Yes, it'll be fine. Why'd you put this stupid card on it, Alex? I didn't. Okay, it's all good. Now I'm gonna go back to stage and get changed before everyone else gets here. Okay. Then why isn't Tiny in his costume? He's the set designer, remember? Uh, director, you mean? <laughs> oh yeah. How's the set, Tiny? The set is set. I've gone for the minimalistic approach. <laughs> <laughs> it's an art form, really. Does everyone have all the props they need? Yeah. You too, Dave? Yeah, of course. Okay, so we're all ready, and you've all got everything you need. So, there's no reason why anything should go wrong. Just as long as you all remember your lines. 
Please, guys, do your best. We don't want any disasters this year. Mr. Ellis, perhaps you should tell all those newbies over there what they should do if they should forget their lives. Well, I'm hoping that they won't. But if you're really stuck, just add live. But please limit your poetic license. Remember, Shakespeare wrote this play, and I dare say he was a better playwright than you are. No worries, Mr. Ellis. It will be fine. Looks like the guests are arriving. Get to your places, everyone. Good luck, everyone. Hey, Mum. Where's Aunt Laura? She's just off the back. She'll be here in a moment. Oh, hey, Mrs. S. How are you doing? Very well, Tiny. What character are you playing tonight? Oh, I'm not a mere actor. I'm the set designer. Pretty much the director. That's great, Tiny. What's your vision for the play? Simplicity meets style. So, basically minimalistic, right? Pretty much. Is, it's an art form. Is that what they're calling it now? Minimalistic. Sounds kind of scary, actually. <laughs> Don't worry. It's not. You'll love it. I'm sure we will, Tiny. And we love your costuming too, Alex. What was your plan to the costumes? Uh, I call it personal preference clothing. It engenders a level of comfort and accountability. Sounds interesting. It is. Anyway, it's time for you to take your seats. What's the crowd from Amy and Sally's baby present doing here? Oh, I don't know. Hey Pinky, was there a card on the present when you took it to Amy and Sam? No, which is actually kind of a problem because they weren't home, so I just left it at the front door. So they won't actually know it's from us. What if they think it's a bomb? It would be fine, Pinky. We could call them and tell them. Don't worry about it. Sometimes it's just good to do something nice for people anonymously. As long as it's not a bomb. It's not Pinky, it's just baby stuff. Are you sure? I'm worried now. Yes, Pinky, I'm sure. Just calm down. The play's about to start. Welcome, family and friends. We're glad you've come to our mid-year drama performance night. Tonight's performance is Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. Please thank the students for both their efforts on the stage and behind the scenes. Let the play begin. What noise is this? Give me my long sword. A crutch, crutch, why call you for a sword? My sword, I say, on Monte you come and flourish his blade in spite of me. Thou villain Capulet, hold me not, let me go. Thou shalt not strive forth to seek a foe. Good morning, cousin. Is the day so young? But new struck now. I me, mean, sad hours seem long. What sadness lengthens Romeo's hours? Not having that which having makes them short. In love? Out. Of love? Out of her favour. <laughs> Romeo! Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Romeo! Romeo, wherefore art thou? I'm here, Juliet. I just came to give you a gift. Why, thank thee, Romeo. I just don't deserve my gift. Sarah, Sarah! What are you doing? Can't you see it's in the middle of a scene? Where'd you say that card came from? Go away! Tell me! Amy and Sam's baby present. Don't oh, get lost. No! <laughs> Alex! CO! Why art thou? <laughs> Why art thou here? Uh, to regain what is rightfully not thine. Is this a joke, baby toys? It's not baby toys. Then what do you call this? What's in a name? <laughs> well, technically that's just a dummy. I get it. You're trying to shut me out. Trying to trick me. Trying to rip me off. I knew I couldn't trust you. Well, I'm not playing this game anymore. Uh, Juliet! Juliet! Where for art thou, Juliet? <laughs> she is a madden for love. She's a madden for love, Rob. Love, Romeo. Tis true, and I too. <laughs> and they all lived happily ever after. No! <laughs> 
<laughs> what are you doing? Get back on the stage! Oh. And Juliet has left the building. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir! Romeo is leaving the building too. <laughs> I knew acting was my thing. Anyway, um, see you at drama club, sir. No, 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 no. You are not coming back to drama club. Either of you two. Mr. Ellis, you can cancel drama club for tomorrow afternoon anyway. You have a chat with me at my office since then. And by the way, nobody leaves drama club, except perhaps Mr. Ellis. <sighs> to work today, Mum? No, I'm still recovering from the overwhelming excitement of last night. <laughs> Me too. I think I should stay home and recover too. Not a chance, superstar. You're going to be the centre of attention today at school. <laughs> too right, he will be. Come on, let's go. So we can expect that the next few days will be fine, with a small chance of showers and temperatures hovering around the low 20s. Thanks, Greg. And now for some intriguing local news. After receiving an anonymous tip-off, police are reporting that a money counterfeiting racket has been operating out of a house in the North Bank area. They are currently looking to speak to a young man by the name of David Smith and have asked for anyone with information to come forward. What? That scoundrel! Don't worry about facing the police! Worry about facing your mother! <laughs> Hello? Maggie? Hello? Well, this is strange. Hello? Who is it? What do you want? Just a brief chat, man. Come in. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking for David Smith. Do you know him? Maybe. Do you know who he is? Maybe. Ma'am, do you know what we're here about? You said you wanted to talk. We're talking. Not much. Look, lady, we really need to talk to David Smith. Why? Are you his mother? Maybe. If you want to talk to David Smith himself, then we can't tell you. Then I probably can't tell you anything either. Seems to me that you know where he is and what this is all about, yet you're not telling us. Look, anything you have to say to David, you can say to me. I'll give you permission to deal with me instead of dealing with him. Alright, fine then. Ma'am, you have the right. Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you said that we could deal with you instead of him, and I assume you're the one behind this counterfeiting operation. So you're under arrest. What? No, I can't. Leave a Bible study in 30 minutes. I can't go to jail now. <laughs> <laughs> that happened, maybe let's go. I would apologise, except it's not my fault that I have the most common name in the world. I said that that's probably your fault, Mum. I guess I gave myself a fright then. I thought it would be easy for you to all have really common names. Uh, well, except for Pinky. That wasn't my choice. But I guess there are times when being named David Smith isn't so great. Yeah, there are at least ten living in this street alone. Really? Well, that might be a little exaggerated, but it's pretty common. 
There's even another kid at school named David Smith. You know, it was probably him. He's really quiet and a bit sneaky, you know. He's quiet because he only moved here two weeks ago. <laughs> well, he probably moved here to cover his tracks. Yeah, well, make sure you stay away from him. I don't want you boys being influenced by a troublemaker. Oh, of course, Mom. Uh, but Dave and I need to go clean our room. Come on, Dave. Now, you girls make sure you choose the right friends as you're growing up. Friends can be so much trouble. That's not a problem for me at all. <laughs> if you don't have any friends, then you can't have bad friends. <laughs> Pinky on the other hand. Just some of the many challenges of being popular. Sarah, have a look online and see if there's any news on that newly arrived delinquent. <laughs> It says, a teenage boy has been arrested for the counterfeiting of $20 notes in his North Bank home. Police are thankful for the assistance of a young man who identified himself as a concerned schoolmate in making of the arrest. He will face the district court next week. Bail has been denied. That concerned schoolmate is the kind of person that you should be friends with. He just never struck me as the criminal type. Do you know where I've been? Do you? At work. No, not work, jail, prison, the slammer, the cooler, sing sing, the crow bar hotel. Okay, Laura, calm down. What's all the commotion? David John Smith, I'll tell you what the commotion is about. You're a criminal, I went to jail because of it. What? I heard it in the news, and when I came here to find you, they arrested me instead. I don't understand. They're looking for you, David, and because I didn't turn you in, they arrested me. Oh, no, they're not looking for me anymore. They just arrested a different David Smith. You mean I broke out of jail for nothing? You broke out? <laughs> well, not really. They just released me for no reason. But it would have been a cool story to tell if I had broken out of jail. Yeah, I'm sure the ladies at Bible study would love to hear that one. <laughs> Bible study, I have to go. Maybe you could give it a miss for today? No way. Our topic is the truth will set you free. And thanks to my nephew for being a criminal, I now have a wonderful object lesson. I'm not a criminal. Love you too, bye. <laughs> Welcome drama students. My name is Miss Burns and I'm the new drama teacher. Mr. Daniels, do you have anything to say? This is the last chance for the drama club. Another mess up means the end of drama club. No worries, sir. We'll be sure to bring it to a swift finish. <laughs> Adult drama club members will be required to join the chess club. But what if all the members? Then I think the end of drama club will be punishment enough for you. That's all I have to say, students. Do better! Well, students, you heard Mr. Daniels. We need to do better. Let's not procrastinate. Let's start immediately on our next play. Danny, please hand out the scripts. What's the play, Miss? It's called Reform. It's a historical narrative of the lives and work of Christian reformers. I found some monk outfits in the prop room, and I thought that we should make use of what we already have, hence Reform. So this is a Christian play? Yes, David, it is. Seriously, how pathetic. Just because you're a Christian, it doesn't mean the rest of us want to be. And how do you know if she's a Christian? Well, I just assumed. Because we go to the same church? I don't go to church. Neither do I. Yeah, I've actually seen her at youth group too. Zip it, Mary. No one asked for your opinion. Okay, that's enough. We would do a script read through and we will remain civil and polite the entire time. Is that clear, David? Whatever. Okay, Danny, I would like you to read the part of John Knox. Corey, you can be John Whitecliffe. Mary, you can be the part of Susanna Wesley. Esther, you can have the part of Lady Jane Grey. And you, David, can read the part of Martin Luther. I'd rather read the part of Martin Luther King. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps you need to enroll us in extra history classes, David. Okay, let's read through. Hi, I'm John Knox. I was the son of a Scottish farmer. I was a priest in my early years, but soon became the leader of a Protestant Reformation in my home country. But I wasn't the first to stand up to the Catholic Church. That's right. I'm John Wycliffe, and I lived more than a hundred years before him. I became fairly well known for always disagreeing with the Pope. 
I also started the movement to translate the Bible into the common language. And thanks to the work of the Bible translators, those of us who live centuries later have the Bible in our own language. I'm Susanna Wesley, and I wrote many letters, meditations, and commentaries on scripture, initially for my own use, not knowing that many of my writings would later be published. I also faithfully taught the scriptures to my 19 children, including my sons, John and Charles, but I'm not the only one or woman to be associated with the Reformation. Hello, subjects. I am Lady Jane Grey. I was the Queen of England for just eight days. I was executed at the infamous Tower of London at just 17 years of age. But in my short 17 years, I became a powerful influence in Protestant England. In my early years, I heard a lot about a reformer over in Germany. I'm not reading this. Yes, you are, David. Unless you want to visit Mr. Daniels and read it through in his office. Just read it, Dave. Fine. My name is Martin Luther. I'm perhaps the best known character of the Reformation. As a child, I believed God and I were on good terms because my parents were religious and we all went to church. As an adult, I realized that I was actually headed for eternal destruction because my good works couldn't save me. This is stupid. I'm not reading another word of this rubbish. What's wrong, Dave? Not feeling spiritual enough today? <laughs> He's probably just a bit worried about some of the bad stuff he's done recently. He doesn't have many good works to go on. <laughs> Thanks, Tony, but that's not even what it's saying, so just stop wasting oxygen. Oh, sorry, bro. I thought you were just a bit worried because you're a pretty bad kid. That's enough, Tony! I just don't care about all this eternity junk. I just don't want to read it. Whoa, calm down, Dave. What's your problem? Yeah, Dave, what's your problem? Nothing! I'm done here. Why do you teachers always have to try and get inside our heads like that? I'm not getting inside his head, Alex, but I know who he is. I bet this is all getting to you too. Why would I care? I'm just guessing, Alex. There's no need to get defensive. I'm not! Now I'm gonna go find my brother, and don't expect to see either of us back here anytime soon. They'll be back soon, kids. Not to worry. <laughs> Thanks for dinner, Mum. Well, Davy, you actually have to thank your sisters. They surprised me and had everything ready when I came home from work. Great. Who knows what Sarah could have put in it? Nothing too bad, just microbial culture and a little truth serum. Seriously? Did you not just see me eat it myself? Why would I put bacteria in food I knew I was going to eat? I don't care about the bacteria, just the truth serum. No, Alex, <laughs> there is no truth serum. What if you're lying? Well, I can't be lying if I have ingested truth serum, right? I'm not following. I'm not surprised. <laughs> Alex, are you worried about telling the truth about something? Yeah, I think it's about some girl who's got his eye on, Mum. Very funny, Pinky, but you're not even close. Well, speaking of telling the truth... Yes, Davy. Oh no, the boys are fighting over the same girl! <laughs> What are you doing, Dave? Just keep your mouth shut. I was right! Would you both just calm down? What I was going to say, Mum, is... Is it okay if Pastor Kenny comes around for a little while tonight? Oh. Oh. It's okay, I'll... I'll ring him in time to come another phone. No, 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 Davey. It's fine. I was just... surprised. When is he coming? <laughs> right about now. <laughs> hey, Pastor. Hey, Dave. Hey everyone. Hello. Hey. How are you all doing? Very well, Pastor. Keeping busy with school, church, drama clubs, football practice, shopping, you name it. Yeah, Dave was telling me last week about your busy schedule. He said you was all a bit stressed, <coughs> stressed out at the moment, so I thought I'd come by for a chat, see if there's anything I could do to help. Well, you know what it's like, Pastor. Sometimes life just becomes overwhelming. It's not necessarily busier or more stressful. It's just, it's, it's just more difficult at times. Yeah, I admire you for all the hard work and effort you put into your kids' lives. And although you may not see the immediate results now, you will in the years to come. And these guys will too. Thank you, Pastor. I'm, I'm just going to step out for a minute. I'll go check on her. It's okay, it's okay Pinky. Just give her a minute to herself. She doesn't get the chance very often. Okay, I just hate seeing her upset. I know, we all do. Guys, how often do you consider your mother's needs before your own? Infrequently. That means not much. <laughs> but we're starting to work on it. Good, I'm glad to hear. How about you boys? 
I see. Well, did you know that the Bible says that having love one for another is the best evidence of being a disciple of Christ? We don't have much love for anyone, really. So, do you really think you can say that you're followers of Christ? I've never actually heard either of you testify of your salvation, and I don't really see any fruits of it either. What do you mean? mum has been taking us to church our whole lives. Yeah, I can quote more Bible verses than most of the hypocrites that go to church every week. Dave, why do you say hypocrites at church? Because they are hypocrites. They act all spiritual when they're around you, but as soon as you're not looking, they're just gossips. They set the rules and then they break the rules. They talk about giving to the Lord and to others, but they just prefer to show off their money and their possessions. Yeah, like Amy and Sam, have you seen their new car? So, do you expect them to be perfect? No, but why would I want to go to church with a bunch of people who tell me what to do, but don't do it themselves? You know, Dave, saying you're not going to church because there are sinners there, it's just like saying you're not going to the gym because there are fat people there. You need, you need to focus on your own sins before worrying about others. Yeah, well, I'm probably not even as bad a sinner as most of these people. There are no degrees of sin, Dave, you know that. So unless you're going to tell me that you're not a sinner, then you're stuck. I know I'm a sinner, but I'm just not that bad. Right, you're well aware of the Ten Commandments, right? So I'll read them out and you keep track of which ones you've kept entirely. And just remember the intention is as bad as the act. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honour thy father and thy mother. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour. And thou shalt not covet. Nine. You've kept nine out of ten. No, I've broken nine out of ten. <laughs> so... When you stand before God, do you really think you'll be able to justify yourself because you're not that bad? Or because of other people's sins? I guess not. Well, how about you, Alex? Where do you stand in all of this? Same place as Dave, I guess. But, you know, Sarah and Pinky aren't perfect. And neither is Mum for that case. Well, you're focusing on others just like Dave is doing. Your mum makes mistakes and your sisters do too, but in the end you're responsible for yourself. Boys, I am aware that I err at times. <laughs> I am too. Aware that I err, not you. Although I do know that you're far from perfect, but that's not what I was saying. I just okay, mean that... Pinky. I get it. <laughs> the challenge for you girls is to grow in Christ. God knows we won't be perfect, but he does expect us to work towards being Christ-like. Do you think you could identify one area of your life that you could work on in order to be more Christ-like? Being nice to people. That's a good start. How about you, Pinky? I'm already nice to people. Yeah, but maybe there's another area of your life that you struggle with. I could probably spend more quality time with people. Maybe I should invite some of the girls to go out shopping with me. I'm sure they'd love to help me fix some new clothes. <laughs> Let's focus on being a little less materialistic. Okay, that sounds good. I'll get Sarah to tell me what it means later. <laughs> Alright, look guys, I want you all to do something for me. Starting from tomorrow, I want you all to come to the Youth Bible Study at church. And tell your mum after dropping you off, instead of having to drive all the way back home, she can just stop by my place and have a coffee and a chat with Michelle. Do you think she'd like that? Yeah, she'd love it. Yeah, but mum already gets a relaxing downtime at other points in the week. Such as? Oh, like when we're at footy practice? She sits in the car for two hours and does nothing. You think she likes sitting in the car for two hours, doing absolutely nothing, when she could be doing so many other things? Well, she never complains about it, so yeah, I guess she likes it. Do you think she likes waking up early every Saturday morning in winter to take you to your footy matches while she sits on the sidelines in the cold watching her kids possibly get injured? Uh, again, if she doesn't like it, she should say something. You have a lot to learn, Alex. Your mum does those things for you, for all of you. Sarah, do you think she likes walking around Bunnings for hours buying new things for your science projects? And Pinky, do you think she likes buying new clothes for you all the time? And boys, do you think she likes buying, paying extra fees for drama club? I mean, you can't even be bothered to shop or do your best. We're pretty selfish, eh? God says that if we are followers of him, we have two simple commandments. To love God and to love others. Girls, I know you love God. Boys, I'm not so sure. But how do you expect to be able to love others when you can't even manage to love the person you're closest to? Now look guys, I don't want you to be discouraged. So while I see you at Bible study tomorrow? Maybe. Yes, Pastor, we'll be there. All of us. Great, I look forward to seeing you. My name is Martin Luther. I'm perhaps the best known character of the Reformation. 
As a child, I believed that God and I were on good terms because my parents were religious and we all went to church. As an adult, however, I realized I was actually headed for eternal destruction because my good works couldn't save me. There was a problem though. I was a monk in the Catholic church and it wasn't as easy as saying, hey guys, you know something, you're wrong. Hey Angela, why'd you steal my pot? Oh, I don't know, Dave, but it could have something to do with you not turning up to drama club for more than a week. Well, I'm back now, and so is your costume designer. Welcome back, boys. David, if you'd like to take your position on the stage and run through the lines of the others, I'll talk to Alex and Tony about their roles. And what am I going to do? Well, you can be the director. Wait, what? That's my job. Cool. All right, people, places. Well, Alex, considering that we already have most of the necessary costumes, I guess that makes your job somewhat easier, but you still need to go through the costumes and give the right size and etc. to people. Easy. As for you, Tiny, I'd like you to not only just focus on the set design, but also on the position of the microphones on the stage, like the sound engineer. Can you manage that? So I get a promotion and a demotion at the same time? <laughs> I don't understand. It's a long story, miss. Okay, well you two boys get to work and I'll see you until the hours are going. You might be able to buy the favour of others, but you cannot buy the favour of God. I had to tell the truth. My wife was so scared of what the consequences would be. She would often ask me. Do you have any idea what they will do to you if you start saying all these things? Okay, pause there guys. Let me see it from the top. Everyone, it's time for our drama performance. As you know, there is a lot riding on this performance, but we simply need to do our best. Is everyone prepared to do that? Yeah. You too, Dave? Yeah, of course. Is everything okay, David? Everything's fine. Okay, let's go backstage and make sure we're ready to go. <coughs> um, Miss, can I talk to you? Look, David, now is not the time for drama. Well, only if it's on the stage. Oh, I'm not here to cause trouble. I just want you to pray for me. Uh, okay. I know it's a bit out of the ordinary, but there's not many people I can say that to without being ridiculed. Well, I'm glad that you trust me, David. What is it that you'd like me to pray for you? Well, you know full well that I've grown up Christian, but I'm actually starting to realise that I might not actually be a follower of Christ. The play script is really getting to me, and Pastor Kenny has been helping me to see how selfish I am, and how much I need Christ. But I just can't do that. Why not? Because then I would have to change. But that's not a bad thing, David. Believe me, miss, it is. If you had any experience being a teenager, you would know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am 26, which means... Oh, I know, that's the problem. Anyway, I can't stop thinking about what Pastor Kenny said, or what the Bible said. I can't think straight. I just don't know if I can get up in front of so many people tonight. Well, maybe when your mum comes, you can talk to her about it. No this. way! You're not going to make me look like an idiot. I knew I shouldn't have trusted you. Forget about praying for me. I don't need it. I just need to get through tonight and put all of this Bible stuff behind me. I'll pray for you, David. Miss Burns. Oh, hello, Mr. Daniels. You're here early. Yes, I wanted to get a good seat for the performance tonight. I hope your main characters manage to stay on task this time. Yes, of course. There's nothing to worry about, Mr. Daniels. Good. Oh, well. Yes, please. Oh, there's no pink. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I ate it already. That's okay. I didn't really want it anyway. It's bad for my skin. Seriously, Pinky? Yes. According to a recent study published in the New York Times, a medium-sized butter popcorn contains more fat than a bacon and egg breakfast, a Big Mac meal lunch, and a steak dinner combined. How unhealthy is that? I much prefer fairy floss. <laughs> Gentlemen, welcome to our drama performance on Reforms. We hope you enjoy this biographical look into the lives of the Reformers. Hi, I'm John Knox. I was the son of a Scottish farmer and a priest in my early years, but soon became the leader of a Protestant Reformation 
in my home country. But I wasn't the first to stand up to the Catholic Church. That's right. I'm John Whitcliffe. I lived more than a hundred years before him. I became fairly well known for always disagreeing with the Pope. I also started the movement to translate the Bible into the common language. And thanks to the work of the Bible translators, those of us who lived centuries later had the Bible in our own language. I'm Susanna Wesley, and I wrote many letters, meditations, and commentaries on Scripture, initially for my own use, not knowing that many of my writings would later be published. I also faithfully taught the Scriptures to my 19 children, including my sons, John and Charles. But I wasn't the only one to be associated with the Reformation. Hello, subjects. I am Lady Jane Grey. I was the Queen of England for just eight days. I was executed at the infamous Tower of London at just 17 years of age. But in my short 17 years, I became a powerful influence in Protestant England. In my early years, I heard a lot about a reformer over in Germany. My name is Martin Luther. I'm perhaps one of the best known characters of the Reformation. As a child, I believe God and I were on good terms because my parents were religious and we all went to church. As an adult, I actually realised I was headed for eternal destruction because my good works couldn't save me. There was a problem though. I was a monk in the Catholic Church and it wasn't, as easy, it wasn't as easy as saying, hey guys, you know something? You're wrong. What was your problem with the Catholic Church? Well, there were a few problems, but the one that first got my attention was the teaching that you could buy forgiveness for your sins. Ridiculous, right? You may be able to buy the favour of others, but you cannot buy the favour of God. I had to tell the truth. My wife was so scared of what the consequences would be. She would often ask me, Do you have any idea what they will do to you if you start saying all these things? What things? The truth. If you tell the truth, do you know what the consequences will be? Jail. I'm going to go to jail. Um... I guess that could be a possibility, but I was thinking of something else. Yeah, or maybe they could kill you or something. <laughs> Mum is going to be so ashamed of me. She is. Dave, what are you doing? Don't be an idiot! Oh, you're on your own now. Sam, did you bring that new car of yours? Of course. Great, thanks for the lawyer. Hey, what are you doing? Stand back, Sam, and I'll make sure you'll be riding your bike to work from now on. Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Mum. Well, it's okay, honey. Miss Burns, he's forgotten his lines. <laughs> Mum, you don't understand. I've messed up big time. I'm the David Smith that the cops are looking for. I'm the one responsible for the money counterfeiting. I'm so sorry, Mum. Oh, Davey. Mum, I've been selfish too. Sorry for making you go shopping all the time. <laughs> Sorry for dragging you around Bunnings and for using your toothbrush in my experiment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kids, it's okay. I love you all so, so much. And and money counterfeiting? Money counterfeiting? <laughs> David John Smith, money counterfeiting? Yes, Mum, I'm so sorry. Don't apologise to me. Apologise to that nice boy who is now in jail because of you. Well, actually... You! What are you doing here? Miss Burns is my sister, and I came here to see the performance of the decade. <laughs> anyway, he actually helped us out with David Smith. It turns out he has a significant criminal record, and he came here to hide his tracks. But even though we're grateful for your help, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to come with me. Do you need to call a lawyer, Mr. Smith? Uh, no, I, I want to call someone else. Mum. Is it alright if you call Pastor Kenny and tell him to meet me at the police station? So you're not going to call your lawyer? No, I've got more important things to deal with. Okay. I'm sorry, Miss Burns, for ruining the plate. You did it, David. In fact, it went perfectly. It's exactly what I've been praying for. Ah, that makes sense. Okay, let's go. Stop right there. Where do you think you are going? Probably to a new school, sir. <laughs> you have ruined it again. Why do you keep doing this to me? I need a holiday. Yes, yes, you do, sir. I hear Siberia is lovely. <laughs> Sorry, Corey. I don't have time for a holiday. Because I'm going to be taking you up to travel teaching. Miss Burns, 
I have a word of advice for you, and you will do well to remember it. I always ask for my Big Mac without onions. <laughs>